After nearly 61 years of independence, Nigeria continues to grope in the dark with no ray of hope that things will get better. Indeed, things are getting worse by the day. Out of this hopelessness grew the desire and determination for oppressed and marginalized Yoruba and Igbo to fight for self-determination that will extricate them from Fulani domination and bondage. As expected, some Nigerians opposed breakup. Some believe in revolution. But how can there be a revolution when Fulani Northerners are spectators? Yesterday, those who still believe in One Nigeria held the People's Alternative Summit 2021. A new Nigeria is possible at the National Women's Center Abuja, where prominent among the speakers were Femi Falanon, human rights lawyer and activist, and Omoyele Showori, the Sahara Reporters publisher, activist, and former presidential candidate of the African Action Congress. I watched the summit from the beginning to the end. As usual, Falana and Shore spoke eloquently and brilliantly, dissected the ancient problems facing the directionless and ungovernable Nigeria. That's how far I agree with them. Like majority of Nigerians, I believe a new Nigeria is absolutely impossible for the following reasons. The Fulanis in charge of the central government are alien to civilization, rule of law, democracy, and constitution law. All the worst dictators that ever ruled Nigeria are Fulanis. The present dictator, General Muhammad Buhari, retired, is a Fulani Sunni Muslim, like they have demonstrated time and time again. They prefer Sharia law to constitutional law. The fight for a better Nigeria, the, the fight for a better Nigeria is mainly by the Yorubas and the Igbos. The Fulanis being the major beneficiaries of federal power, federal powers, and nepotism are missing in action. They are totally against anything that will radically transform Nigeria. The 1999 constitution was written by and for the Fulanese. The constitution gives them undue advantage over other ethnic groups, which is why they oppose a new constitution. They have made the country so ungovernable, anarchy reigns supreme everywhere you turn. There's no law and order. Court judgments are vacated with impunity. Getting justice in Nigeria is as impossible as for a camel to pass through the eyes of a needle. The protracted case of Shoure is a classical example. The case has been delayed, adjourned, and postponed many times. Fulanese see themselves as the rightful owners of Nigeria. They feel superior to other ethnic groups. In their arrogance and obduracy, they believe they were born to rule Nigeria forever. It's their way or the highway. To a large extent, they have succeeded beyond their widest dreams. As long as Fulani is the president, they don't care how Nigeria is governed. Every strategic positions are controlled by Fulani's armed forces, federal civil service, justice department, federal corporations and agencies, federal institutions, foreign service, Name it. They are the prosecutor, the jury, and the judge. They are anathema to a new Nigeria that will level the playing field for all Nigerians. 
they are against meritocracy. INEC is headed by a Fulani. Fulanese will never allow free, fair, and credible elections that will make way for a progressive, visionary, and revolutionary president like Shoure because it will hurt and halt their hegemony. It is intrusive, instructive to note that all the progressive ideas, a new constitution, creation of state police, new revenue allocation formula, restructure based on devolution of power, state autonomy, ETC, suggested at the national conference initiated by former President Goodluck Jonathan, were flatly rejected by the Fulani and the Northern delegates. In the National Assembly, the Fulani and the Northern reps and senators are more than the Southwest and South-South combined. Any progressive legislation is DOA, dead on arrival. We all know the easiest way to remove incompetent politicians from office is through election. When Americans got tired of Donald Trump, they threw him out through the power of the ballot box. But that is not possible in Nigeria. In a country where Fulani government equates dissent, criticisms, protests, freedom of press to treasonable felony, how can you hold such a regime accountable? How can you call such a government to order? Yorubas, Igbos, and Hausa Fulanese have nothing in common. For example, Yorubas are urban dwellers. Fulanese are nomads. Yorubas are highly educated, enlightened, liberal, civilized, sophisticated, creative, intelligent, warm, friendly, accommodating, and all. Whereas the Fulanese are barbaric, hostile, violent, feudalistic, uninspiring, uneducated, raw, and unintelligent. These and other differences make our union unworkable and impossible. That is why the solution is the answer. We know there will be challenges in Odudua Nation, there will be challenges in the Biafra Republic, there will be challenges in the Niger Delta Republic, and also probably the Middle Belt Republic, as it may be. But our situation cannot be worse from where we are coming from. The Yorubas have the capacity, the capability, resources, creativity, and the resolve to make Odudua nation one of the best imagined nations. There will never be one united Nigeria, and our best bet is separation, then we can live happily ever. All right, guys, what are your thoughts concerning this particular news story as written by Bayo Uluasami? Well, he said, a new Nigeria is impossible. Well, drop by at the comment section, let us know what your thoughts are. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you are yet to subscribe. Hit the bell icon so you can get notification whenever we post new stories. Endeavor to share these new stories with your friends, family, relations, and loved ones so they can get to know what is happening around the world and be informed. Thank you so much. Guys, I appreciate your support, and I'll see you on the other news. Thank you and bye for now.